how the word of God guides you into the right relationship. My name is Olu Shegun Moku Olu. Listening to many people who are having marital problems, particularly Christians, it's very apparent that the foundation of their relationship is usually the problem in their marriage. What do we mean by this? Many of the problems that people face in marriage are the consequence of the choice they made. The point where you are saying to that lady, I want to marry you. The point where as a sister you are responding and saying, I accept to marry you. You are making a great decision. You are making a great choice. And what you are going to get in marriage is the result of that choice. You are going to see the consequence of the choice that you have made. So you marry a man, for example, as a sister in Christ. And then you now realize in marriage that this person is a cheat, is frustrating, is completely opposite of who a Christian should be. So you go ahead telling people how this man maltreats you, how he does this, how he does that. What you don't realize is that the point where you said yes to that man was the point where you invited that trouble into your life. In other words, when you choose the right person, chances are that you will get married right. When you choose the wrong person, it's almost certain that you will only end up being frustrated in marriage. So it's very important as a single person for you to understand how exactly does the word of God guide you to make right choice. Because when I listen to people and I ask them, how did you marry this person? How did you come to a conclusion that this person is born again? I can marry this person. The kind of things people say clearly reveal that they do not know how to make right choice. They do not understand how the word of God guides us to make right marital choice. You hear things like, well, I prayed, I asked my pastor to pray, my father in the Lord to pray, I went to a prophet to check, I went to a mountain for three days. Those are not the ways to discern whom to marry. The word of God is clear on this matter. So what we want to do is to examine the word of God. Now, this is where the problem really is. Many people are not interested in the word of God. So what they want is to just pray and just know the will of God. You see, if that is the case, God won't give us scriptures. We will just pray and then just, just be knowing things by just praying. We will be knowing what to do. But you and I will agree that that is not the way things are. We have to learn the scriptures. We have to learn precedence. We have to learn the principles of the word of God, the concept, the precept of the word of God regarding marriage. If you are not ready for this, then chances are that you are going to enter into a very terrible marriage. So how exactly does God guide you to choose the right person and get marriage right? Now, to understand this, you must understand that there are three phases of your life when it comes to marriage. The first phase of your life is the phase when you are single when you are not married, when you are not involved with anybody, when the matter of relationship, courtship, has not come into your life. That's phase one. Phase two is that point when you are contemplating whether to marry this person, not to marry this person, how to speak to this person to marry you, or how to pray over a proposal, how to decide whether to accept A or to accept B. That's the second phase of your life. The third phase is when you are in the marriage. So now, if you understand these three phases, we will now examine how the word of God helps us in each of those phases because each one is a foundation for the next one. If you don't get one right, you won't get the next one right. You see, I pray you understand this in the mighty name of Jesus. Once you get a layer right and you get the second layer right, you get the third layer right, you will have a wonderful marriage. Now, let's look at phase one. That is the state when you are single. And I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 32. 
He says, but I want you to be without care. He who is unmarried cares about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. You see, the state when you are unmarried, what should preoccupy your life is how to please Jesus. Sadly, this is not how many people lived. So it means that you are already laying wrong foundation for your marriage. If the way you are living is not to please the Lord. Don't spend your single life chasing relationship, chasing the opposite sex, making it look as if your life is all about having the opposite sex in your life. The single phase of your life is that part where you deepen your relationship with Jesus, where you give yourself to the study of the scriptures, where you spend a lot of time praying, where you are involved in the things that concerns the Lord, where what concerns Jesus is what concerns your life. But if all you do in that phase is to bleach your face, if all you do is to spend hours in the bathroom because you want to look in a certain way, if all you do is to buy shoes, to buy bags, and to attend clubs, and to party, you are already laying a wrong foundation for the first phase of your life. It means that you are laying a wrong foundation for marriage. So, getting marriage right does not start from the point where you are proposing to somebody or where somebody is proposing to you. It starts with the moment you give your life to Jesus. How are you living your life from that moment on? For example, did you know Jesus said, Love ye one another as I have loved you. He said, By this shall men know that you are my disciples indeed. Then in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, it says, Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Now, what does this signify? It means that it is the same love you express to people just by being a born again. That's the same love you will express in marriage. Love ye one another as I have loved you. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. It's the same thing. It means that if you have been walking in that kind of love, then you will understand true love. You will know that love is not a feeling. Love is a commitment to treat people the way Jesus himself will treat them. So there is a the single face of your life which should be devoted to Jesus. We should be devoted to knowing the Lord. Not, not devoted to uh, um, having the opposite sex in your life. When your life is just all about the opposite sex, all about the opposite sex. No, it's a period where you deepen your relationship with Jesus. Where you grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. Where you have time for scriptures because you have little commitment in life. So you have the time to give yourself to scriptures. As a young person, endeavor to read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You have several years to do that. As a, as a child of God, you have several years to do that. Before you begin to talk of a phase when you want to now consider who to marry, who to accept, and so on. You have enough time to deepen your relationship with Jesus. Let me read more scripture to you. The kind of thing you should be doing. And as you are doing this, you are invariably laying a proper foundation for your marriage. First uh, John chapter 2, verse 6. It says, He who says he abides in him ought himself to walk just as he walked. So what should you be doing at this phase? Walk as Jesus walked. Let your life epitomizes Christ. Let your life synchronizes, synchronize with the life of Jesus. Let people see Jesus in you. He said you must walk as Jesus walked. He's, you must abide in him. And you must walk just as he walked. This is the time to cultivate Christ-likeness. It's not when you enter into marriage that crisis now comes. That you will now be saying, oh, I cannot, I cannot tolerate this. I cannot bear this. No, this is the time to become like Jesus. This is the time to walk like Jesus walked. This is the time to pattern your life after Jesus. It's not in marriage. You will now be trying to pattern your life after Jesus. This is the phase where you must do that. If you look at um, uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 25. Let me read Matthew chapter 7. It talks about obedience, obedience to the teachings of Christ. Because that face, you need that at that face. It says, it says, Therefore, whoever hears this saying of mine and does them, 
I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the flood came, and the flood beat, the, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. This is the time to lay a proper foundation for your life through obedience to the teachings of Christ. It's not in marriage. So that when storms will come later, when wind will blow later, you are already grounded in Christ. This is the first phase of your life. This is the single phase. If you are single, be thoroughly single. Many people don't have a single life. Almost as soon as they reach poverty, uh, puberty, they are in test, they have the opposite sex. They are in a relationship. They are having boyfriend, girlfriend. They basically don't have a life. When they were free from the opposite sex, when all that matters in their heart was Jesus and whatever they are doing in life, maybe schooling, learning a trade or business or whatever it is, or learning a skill. This is the time. He says, therefore, whoever hears the saying of mine and does them, I will like him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. This is the time to lay foundation. This is not the time to sleep around. This is not the time to be taking um, indecent pictures and be posting on, on Facebook. This is not the time to go and be visiting a boyfriend. This is not the time to go and be fornicating. This is a time when you live for Jesus. So you see, if the word of God is not guiding your life in this phase, it won't guide you in the second phase. Talk less of the third phase. So you see, a lot of people do not know the word of God in this phase. They have not lived and experienced the word of God in this phase of their life. But then suddenly, they want to get married. And now they, they want to know the will of God on who to marry. How will you know it? How will you know it? Look at Romans chapter 12 verse 1. He says, I, I, I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Holy and acceptable unto God. He said that you might be able to know that which is good and pleasant will of God. So it means that for you to know the good and pleasant will. The, let me read that passage. Let me, uh, let me read it for us. Let's see it. Because you will discover that there's something you need to do before you can begin to make choice. Say, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You must have offered your, yourself to God for you to know the will of God. Your mind must have been renewed. Many of you, your mind has never been renewed. Your mind is still full of the old things you've always known. Your mind has not been shaped by the word of God. And then now you want to get to that second phase. You want to marry. You want to discern the will of God. You don't know what to do. You now begin to set all kinds of wrong parameters for yourselves. So look at what happened. You know, I've seen people before that they will say, a man will approach a lady that I want to marry you. Then the lady will now tell the man, go and be praying so that God can speak to us. Me too, I'll be praying. Why did they approach you in the first place? If he was not sure, God has led him. That's to tell you that the two of you are confused. As a sister, you are the one who is supposed to go and pray. He should have settled the matter before the Lord. He should have known. In fact, I've seen brothers who will approach sister. They will now say, I want you to pray. I myself, I will be praying. I'm like, if you stay praying, why then did you go and approach somebody that you want to marry her? If you were not yet sure, if you had not settled the matter, why then are you approaching each other? So what happened in the second phase? You know, this is the phase where people will tell somebody to help them pray. <laughs> they, some, they will say all kinds of things. Uh, somebody said, I told God that you should confirm me through five persons. And at the end of the day, she entered into a terrible marriage. Somebody will say, when my, my father and the Lord confer, confirmed it, I went to a prophet. Let me tell you, the average Christians, if you tell them to help you pray that you want to marry somebody, they will say they didn't see any trouble that you go ahead because they want you to be married. They themselves, did you know if they know the will of God for their lives? Do, do you know whether these people have been able to discern one thing in life to say, God told me this and it came to pass? It is you that must know God personally to be able to know who to marry. Somebody else cannot do that job for you. And that's why I, I divided your life into these three phases. Because if you have missed it as this first phase, you will have problem at the second phase. And that's the problem with people. 
They don't know the Lord. They don't know scriptures. Did you know that the Bible is so clear as to who to marry, who not to marry? It is in those single days while you are studying scriptures that you will have learned all of those things. The Bible says, do not marry an angry man. Do not, it, no, the, the way it puts it is, do not be a friend with an angry man. And then you, you know this man has problem with anger. This lady has problem with anger. And then you go and marry that person. He says, by their fruit you shall know them. Not by their church activities. Not by the fact that, eh, you know, sir, he involved in uh, church work. He was even preaching. He leads prayer. All of that are not signs that somebody is born again or that somebody is right for you to, to marry. There are those that God clearly says you should not marry. And there are those who say these are the kind of person you should marry. These are the fruit you should look for in a person. Do you know those fruit that you should look for in the person that you want to marry? Look at what he says in Psalm 30. Two fast verse eight, Psalm 30, 32. Yes, and verse eight. He said, "I will instruct you." That's note number one. I will teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Instruction, teaching, and guidance. Instruction. You see, you cannot be. It is not when you need to make a decision that you will now be taught. You are already taught before that time comes when you will make a decision. You go to school to learn for years so that when the years of working comes, you have already been prepared. But just imagine you didn't go to school, you didn't learn, then the time of work comes and then you want to work. What do you have that you, will, you are going to deploy? He said, I will instruct, I will teach you, I will guide you. Three things, instruction, teachings and guidance. Many people are not ready for teachings. Many people are not ready for their lives to be instructed. I'm telling you, God will instruct you as to how your marital life will go. God will teach you about kingdom marriage and God will guide you. He will guide you and ensure that you marry the right person. Because no matter how well taught you are, if the guidance of the Lord is not there, you may still make mistake. I'm telling you, none of us can choose right. He said the heart of man is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? And the person you want to marry has a heart. How do you know that heart is right with God? Only the Lord knows that. And so he will have been preparing you. In my days as a single person, you know there are days that some sisters will just walk into my life. And the Holy Ghost will tell me that this person you have nothing to do with her. She just comes to pretend around you. And, and shortly after, I will see all the signs and symptoms. That is the Holy Ghost. I could not have designed it. Some of these sisters look so fantastic and wonderful. You just feel the Holy Ghost. Look at this one. This one is okay. Let me just go ahead with this one. <laughs> oh, but it's the one that sees the heart of every man. Many people have entered terrible marriage today because they don't know all these basic things. If all you are doing is that you are just running everywhere, you are not ready to sit down to be taught, I'm telling you, you will have a problem. If, if you read Romans 8, 14, it says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So there is a place for instruction, for teaching, for guidance, for the leading of the Lord. The leading of the Lord, that's what you might call the, being, uh, the guidance of God. So instruction, teaching, and guidance. Instruction, teaching, and leading. The Holy Spirit will lead you. He will speak to you. But you see, he starts with the word of God. The word of God will do a lot of clearing for you. You will know that, no, I have nothing to do with this person. For example, somebody comes, somebody wants to marry you. The person has no problem fornicating. And you call yourself a child of God. And you will still accept that person. The fact, see, the fact that the person ha has no problem with fornication. Even let's say he initiated, you now say, no, that's all right, no problem. No sex until we marry. But the fact that he had no problem with it is already a red flag. But because you yourself, you really don't even have any conviction. What do you do? Then you accept the person. And later on in marriage, you will now say this person is committing adultery. A person who can fornicate, don't you understand, they will commit adultery. Look at Jesus in the parable, Matthew chapter 13. He said, the seed that fell by the wayside among tongues and on the rock. Those are people you should not marry. But they will look like Christians. How do you discern all of this? That's where teaching comes from. 
you must be well taught. You must be well instructed. And you must be led of the spirit, not by your flesh, nor by your feelings. We don't marry by feelings. It's not, you know, women will tell me, I love him so much. A lady came to me, she says, sir, is it okay for me to tell my fiance that I love him so much? I said, if after marriage, this man is cheating and sleeping with other women, will you still love him so much? If he has accident and break his spinal cord and he can no longer perform sexually, will you still love him so much? Then she kept quiet. I said, you don't even understand love. How do you dare say you love somebody so much? Have you gone to the cross to die for the person? What you, the problem is that you have feelings. You have feelings because of the way the person makes you feel. You have feelings for the person. That's not love. You see, that's part of what teachings we do. It will help you to place your feelings in the right place. Many people are making decisions based on feelings. The reason why you end up having sex which you don't want to have is because you were eventually led by your feelings. He said as many as are led by the spirit, not by their feelings. So it's not by visions or dreams. You say, people will say, eh, somebody saw vision for me. Many people will say, I had a revelation. When you ask them, what's that revelation? It was a dream they are calling revelation, deceiving themselves. You that you cannot discern the word of God. It's dreams now you want to discern to know who to marry. Are we saying that God can never reveal some things to you in dream? Nobody will say that. We, we've seen several in scriptures. But you see, it's, it wasn't a regular occurrence. Even Joseph, you called the dreamer, he had only one dream all his life. And that dream was repeated once. And that was what was recorded for him. We are to be guided by the word of God. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Even the Holy Spirit will guide you by his word. But you don't know that word. Some of you are attending wrong churches. Churches where you are praying for enemies to die. Churches where they tell you clearly that their mission is to preach money. How do you grow? How, how, how do you think that church will prepare you for marriage? You will not enter into, into a terrible marriage. You forgot you were the one carrying yourself to a wrong church. Where they were indoctrinating you wrongly. Where they didn't deal with what Jesus said should be taught. He said, go and teach everything I have commanded you. But every time, eh, it's time for you to shine. Your success is today. Your breakthrough, all of those things. How, how will that prepare you for life? Just empty deception and flattery. Then that leads you to the last phase. Okay? To the last phase. That's the phase when you are in that marriage. If you got the foundation right, phase one, and in phase two, you were able to marry the right person for your life. The appointed person for your life. As you found in Genesis chapter 24. The servant of Abraham, he prayed. He said, let her be the person you have appointed unto your servant Isaac. There was somebody appointed. And she was Rebecca. And he got it right. You also can get it right. So let's assume now that you've gotten it right. You are now in marriage. There is still work to do. Even though the majority of the work has been done. Because you are already living by the word of God. You are not going to change in marriage. You will continue to live that word. So there are principles that guide marriage. And they are contained in the word of God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23. It talks about your relationship as husband and wife. Hus wife, submit to your own husband in all things as unto the Lord. You are submitting to the Lord. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Unconditional love. It has nothing to do with feelings. You can't say, I love my wife and you are committing adultery. You can't say, I love my wife. You are going to have a child outside. You can't say, I love my wife. You hide everything for her. You frustrate her. You don't talk to her. You might treat her. So the scripture is very clear as to how to treat each other. It's also clear on how to raise your children. If you go to Ephesians chapter 6, it talks about how to raise children. It puts responsibility on you as a father to raise your children in the admonition of the Lord. That means every child must be raised to become like Jesus. If you don't have that time and that grace, then don't, don't have those children. It's very clear what you have to do in marriage, how you have to conduct yourself. If you read Colossians 3, 18 to 21, you will also find a scripture explaining how you should live as husband and wife. And then all over scriptures, you will find divine wisdom and the principles of the word of God on how to conduct each other. As you study more, if you go to Ephesians, uh, Phil, um, yes, Philippians, it talks about esteeming the other person better than you. He said, let nothing be done out of selfishness or, or vain glory. You will discover that sex in marriage must be selfless. It must not be self-focused. It must be selfless. You will see how to talk to your wife, how to talk to your spouse, 
how you should manage money. He said the two of them shall become one. They shall cliff and become one in everything. Financially, you cliff, you become one. Nobody can break you. You prioritize your wife above your family because he said you shall leave your father and mother and cleave to your own wife. All these principles are contained in the word of God. First Peter 3 verse 1 to 7 talks about how wife are to relate with their husband. Husband, how they are to treat their wife as unto a weak vessel. So that their prayer be not hindered. How they are to dwell with them in knowledge. That is the third phase. So as you grow in Christ, your marriage will be growing. As you yourself are becoming more like Christ, your marriage will be growing. This is what the word of God does for you. But you don't have the time for the word of God. You only have time for the vanity of this life. How do you intend to get married right? It will not work. So in, in a summary, this is how the word of God guides you into successful marriage. So you will marry right and your marriage will continue to be right. And that is why we have uh, designed by the help of the Holy Ghost uh, the free Bible marriage course for singles and for married. So if you are single and you want to enroll in the marriage course, you are watching this on our YouTube channel, check the description below. You will see the link there. Just click on it and enroll. It is completely free. That is the teaching we are talking about. If you are watching this on our Facebook, just check the uh, profile. Or if you check the link, you, may find, you will find our numbers there, email, they are there. Just write us that you want the link to the free single Bible marriage course. Please indicate that you are single. And if you are married and you want to take the course also, let us know that you are married. We will send you the married link. But if you are watching on YouTube, the two links are down there in the description below. On Facebook, you can even comment to request for the link. We will send the link to you. So spend time to be taught. Spend time to be guided by the word of God. You will get it right. The word of God cannot fail. And see, if it's possible, I will kneel down for you. To beg you, if you are single, I beg you in the name of the Lord, and you are a child of God, don't make marital mistake. Satan is using marriage as a trap for people today. He's setting marriage as a trap for God's children. So if you're a brother that you are serious in the Lord, he, he will go and raise one lady. There will be a thorn in your flesh that you will not be able to discern. You will go and marry her. If you're a sister with a potential for the name of the Lord, there is one wicked man that the devil will be preparing, that he will look nice and caring. Then you will go and marry the person. And from day one, almost till you die, you will be addressing marital problem. You won't even have time for the name of the Lord. That's what the, that's what the devil is planning. But you see, when you give yourself to the word of God and you allow the Lord to teach you and learn at the feet of the master, you will get it right. You see, the word of God, it does not fail. It will guide you right. It will guide you. Jesus said in Colossians 3, 16, says, no, the scripture rather says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all things. The word of Christ, what is dwelling in you? What is most preoccupant of your heart? Is it the word of God or the vanity of life? If you want to get it right, there is no shortcut. You must sit down and learn. Somebody asked me, how can I know the person to marry? I said, go and enroll for a free marriage course. He said, no, I'm not ready. Just tell me. I said, I can't tell you. Oh, what do you want me to tell you? Something that is contained in Genesis to Revelation. How do I just tell you that in, in two minutes? That person is not ready to marry right. If you are not ready to learn the word of God, it's an indication that you are also not ready to marry right. I am Olushe Gumoko Olu, and I am your brother in Christ. If you want to reach to us, if you are watching this on our YouTube channel, Check the description below. You'll find all our contact details. Our phone number, email address, and all our social media handles are all there. And if you are watching this on Facebook, check the profile or about section up there. You will find um, our email, web address, phone number, and all other social media handles also. Please use any of those platforms to reach out to us. Once again, I beg you and I beseech you, by the mercies of God. Give yourself to the word of God. Don't marry in the haste. Don't marry wrongly. And I pray that the grace of the Lord will be sufficient for you. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you.